is the Fantasy Alarm NBA DFS Show with John Impemba and James Grande. What is going on, FN Nation? John Impemba here with James Grande. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm NBA DFS Playbook Show. We are here for Monday's eight-game main slate over on DraftKings, Sir James. Uh, as we talked about it on the show this morning, uh, we are getting into the funny season of the NBA. Uh, teams ruling out guys, rosters, and, and new faces uh, making some appearances <laughs> here. Um, this slate, obviously, really no different with that uh, in terms of injuries and news that we are waiting for. This is a 7 o'clock slate that runs all the way out to the 1030 hour as well. Uh, so no, we at least have late swap, but DraftKings perfectly okay. Uh, giving us the 3 10 p.m.s and the 7 p.m. start time. Seems like they can't make up their mind when that is good and not good to go. Uh, but nonetheless, we have eight games here. How are we feeling about everything today? You and I were briefly discussing some ownership numbers before we went live. That ownership was just updated. Uh, some interesting names are up there. A few we talked about, some we did not talk about this morning. Yeah, a couple of them injury related. Uh... And, you know, some injuries f- make things a little more precious than others, you know. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, I had nothing for the other one. I was trying, uh, I was trying, uh, I really had nothing there. Um, okay. Go on nothing there. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be an interesting uh, slate with, Team shorthanded. I mean, I don't know if you saw Underdog when they put out their like uh, three o'clock status update. Their questionable was like there was three rows, and the first two rows were like all all stars in the last two years. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a it's a deep list. There were some interesting shoot around notes from earlier today, notably Kobe White, who was that shoot around today, despite being listed doubtful. A uh, note Tobias Harris at shoot around. We got all the Boston, every player in on Boston is on the injury report in some capacity or another. Um, so you know, we have we have Memphis here. Uh, we know what Memphis is has done to us uh over the last couple of months. So, you know, you just I, I don't know how many times we have to say it, probably more now than ever. Just you gotta be present for the news. Like you can't, you just can't miss the news like you can't miss starting lineups you can't miss who's in who's out you have to stay and this is their their point on late swap no late swap like they don't you know a lot of people can't but right if you're going to play nba dfs lebron james and anthony davis are expected to play tonight they're questionable in the 10 30 window tonight and yet Ganku, a kongu who has listed questionable out of the clouds for atlanta yep. like that would put a wrench into some atlanta plans so um, there obviously has to be just boots to the ground in your office around luck and around every half hour when you're going to get lineups and when you're going to get rule outs, you know? So, um, should be another fun slate, uh, with tons and tons of players ruled in and we're going to have to know, we're not going to worry about anything. Okay, yeah. hundred percent agree with you. Before we do jump into this, we appreciate you all tuning in here i want to give a quick shout out james because it is fantasy baseball season so uh our fantasy baseball draft guide and cheat are available they come as part of the all pro package uh you can go to fantasy.com slash wind you can buy the cheat sheet by itself the draft guide by itself or if you become an all pro member it gets it all included with your content uh behind the paywall dfs mlb we're gonna have some playbooks out for the showdown slates uh for wednesday and thursday for the korean baseball uh, series they're doing out there between the Dodgers and Padres. So again, if you have your fantasy baseball drafts tonight, like James and I do, we have an auction draft uh, shortly after we go off stream here today. Uh, you got to get your cheat sheet in hands. It has auction values. It has a draft grid. has top 350 player rankings, individual positional rankings, dynasty rankings, rookie rankings, you name it. And of course, the draft guide has all the strategy articles you guys need to dominate your draft. So scan that QR code, go to fantasyslam.com slash win, Get your draft guide, get your cheat sheet, or become a member of the Fantasy Star family today by going all pro and uh, join us for the upcoming fantasy baseball season into the NFL season. Anything that's behind the paywall gets covered with your all pro subscription package. So again, can't stress this enough, fantasyalarm.com slash win. Go check out everything we have to offer with our all pro subscription package 
today. Uh, Justin, I see through you. I know you're a fantasy summer member here. I'm sure you got your draft guide and cheat sheet ready to go for your fantasy baseball leagues here. I uh, appreciate you popping in for the uh, MLB and uh, NBA show. We will uh-huh. have an MLB DFS show here as well, uh, James. So I know a lot of people are excited uh, for the return of that as well. Uh, let's get into this NBA slate here. Uh, I got I got to get your first thoughts because the Aaron Fox is eighty nine hundred dollars here. Get this matchup against Memphis. Yeah. But if you go and look at the roster ship projections for tonight, you have Harrison Barnes, Malik Monk, <laughs> Keegan Murray, all up over twenty percent for roster ship here tonight. You do. So what are we what do we think we're gathering here by those players gaining exposure instead of maybe the top end plays like a Fox or Sabonis in this game? I mean, they're so cheap. You know, like um Harrison Barnes, who has been playing well in three straight games. Uh shout out to you, Faisal. Because my, my thanks, I appreciate the the support there. Um, Harrison Barnes has been playing well and is forty two hundred dollars. That right. lets you on a slate where, you know, cats out of the bag. I mean, the the some of the top names in value today in terms of ownership: Delano Banton, Precious Achua, <laughs> uh, Craig Porter Jr., who mm-hmm. we don't even know what the minutes are going to look like there. Svi Mihailuk is getting – you're finally, John, we made it to a Svi slate possibly, yep. 17%. Jalen Smith with, like, no injuries in Indiana is getting 17%. So, like, I would just say it's more, like, just how cheap they are in a good spot. Because, like, Keegan, too, and we've talked about Keegan at home for, right. you know, since we discovered how – the shooting splits. crazy the splits are yeah i mean there is a it is a wild ride so um you know i i think it's more so that the monk we know i mean they're he's a shooting guard small forward eligible player and has a massive ceiling so i would say more than anything that than like comparing to support and and we've seen it at times like Sometimes I think we all fall victim to, I must play the best player in this spot. But right. like that doesn't always translate because the best player is also the most expensive, right? And uh, in DFS, you're also looking for value and people to exceed the 5X mark. And in tournaments, Harrison Barnes goes for 30 fantasy points tonight again, John. Like that's better than De'Aaron Fox going for 45 right. at his price. So um I would say it's just more so people prioritizing other spend ups and looking for that King's value in a good spot. So that said, De'Aaron Fox is $8,900. Uh, there was a tick there where he was over 9K, and we we're like, yeah, this makes sense. Like he should continue to, on, on that trajectory. And here we are now, 89. How does he compare when it comes to DeJounte Murray, who's at 98, Halliburton at 92, Brunson at 9K, and then your 8K guards of Fox, Curry, and Maxi? I mean, I'm definitely interested in DeJounte, Lakers' bottom three defense in the league since the All-Star break. Um, it, he's been good, even on nights where, you know, he's not needed to play full capacity because the, they were blowing the Clippers out last night. Um, 34 minutes, 44 and a half fantasy points just goes to show you, like, how locked in he is. So I'm okay getting to Murray. i probably rank Murray a little ahead of Fox. Um, Halliburton... You know, continues to just not make shots. Really comes down to it. It's just, and it's a tough spot. Like I'd rather play Jalen Brunson now. No OG, yeah. 36, 38 minutes last two games, 28 and 30 shots the last two games. Obvious pace up spot for uh, the Knicks and Jalen Brunson. So, you know, lock and load Brunson. Maybe 40. It gets up to 40 minutes in a competitive in a competitive yeah. setting tonight. So, uh, love Brunson. I'd rank him ahead of Fox. Um, he'd be ahead of. Curry for me, De'Aaron Foxwood. Very on the fence about the Maxi thing because, like, the shots haven't slowed up for Tyrese Maxi. No. The points haven't really slowed up for Tyrese Maxi. 30 actual in back to back games, like, since um, returning from his um, concussion. But, like, yeah. Those who like last game was without Tobias, and 40 just didn't get you there because there's not, there's just a lack of peripherals. Like, if Maxi goes out and scores you 40 or 50, like he's done a couple times, actual, then 
yeah, you're like that's you don't need the peripherals, but like this isn't the Joel and Bead stretch that we're like relying like where JoJo had forty thousand points and rebounds every night. And you're like, yeah, he's gonna hit, he's gonna exceed twelve k, and he's gonna like Maxi's if he doesn't go for forty actual is just like not getting you there. So I bring Fox ahead of him as well. Um, so only Murray and Brunson ahead of De'Aaron for me tonight. Okay. Uh, in the mid tier, we highlighted earlier uh, this morning that Darius Garland probably was going to end up being a priority for us. Uh, again, seeing the ownership uh, on some of the other players in that game, uh, not named uh, Darius Garland, I think was a little interesting. Now, Garland's still garnering a decent chunk there in the mid tier, around 16%. But you know, does that surprise you that he is maybe not a bit more popular given the alternatives where the ownership is going at value today? Yeah, uh, especially the spot. I mean, the spot is great, right? Indiana, yeah. great pace up spot. There's, I mean, you know, no Donovan Mitchell has Mobley. So I don't, I don't really understand um, why 10% of the field is playing Darius Garland. I, I don't know. If, are we sleeping? Are people sleeping? Well, that's the thing, right? It feels like the decision has been made that Karis LeVert savings is where people want to go over Darius Garland. Here. Not even that much. Like, obviously, $800 is $800. The eligibility is um, better than Garland's, but... Right. I mean, but he's 26%. You said there's a, and they're in, I'm looking at Garland at nearly 16 so a 10% difference in uh, roster ship here uh, between the two. That's the update. I'm... I'm Filling out the, I'm filling out the update right now, so it should, I should have it in front of me any second. Um, yeah, yeah, he's at, yeah, Garland's at around 16, percent and you'll get, um, uh, you're looking at Levert around 26 percent here. I mean, that is interesting. That is move, but it, at least it's moving north. Um, yeah. I would, I would probably still like Levert's ownership or Levert's uh, position eligibility is obviously better. I would probably still prioritize Garland, especially in tournaments where I'm getting him at. Uh, Kenny, I threw the support uh, email in there for you. If you want to shoot a message over to our support help, they'll get you set up uh, with the lineup generator there for you. Um, we're working our way down into the point guard. Again, Garland is there at 76. Around him, Anthony Simons. Kobe White was seen at the morning shoot around. He's 78. Uh, D'Angelo Russell just below him at 75. Derek White at 71 with likely missing Celtics here tonight. Um, you know, Where's your priority now in the 7K tier? Well, confirmed at least one. Two, Drew Holiday, yeah. And, and, and Horford. Yeah. So for sure them are out. Uh, if Tatum or Brown are out, uh, White is my guy here. You know that. Like, I, yeah. It's an easy plug. He is the beneficiary of the biggest usage rate. Every single time somebody is out, uh, Derek White is the biggest beneficiary. Um, uh, it doesn't hurt playing alongside Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown. It doesn't. Uh, so... It would be white for me. Everything else is just kind of fine um, outside of him and Garland. I, I Even if Kobe White plays, I mean, man, going from doubtful to in with a hip, that doesn't feel like it's something that – Kobe White falls a lot. Right. Like that sustain – feels like a re-aggravation of an injury if he decides to go out there and play. So I'd probably pass. Cade minutes, you know, I'm just – so so down on the Cade minutes. Plus, obviously, we don't know if he's going to play, and the spot stinks as well. So it would be Derek White in this tier for me, um, pretty much. Derek White hasn't played a single minute this year without a Horford, Brown, Tatum, or Holiday on the floor. So well, I mean, that's because Jason Tatum doesn't miss games. <laughs> like, game, yeah. You can't you can't not play like good. Yeah, like good luck just getting Jason Tatum to sit. That's that's Derek White's problem. But you think maybe there was like a rotation point at some point where like maybe he was on the floor. No, no, he's always on the floor with at least uh, at least one of those guys there. Uh, That said, uh, no Horford, Brown, Holiday, assuming that ends up being the case. Then you get Porzingis and Tatum in there. Um, Derek White has a 30% usage rate. Dude, every time, every time these dudes are off the floor, people are just like, nah, not going to click Derek White's name. He must. He's probably too expensive. No, he's not. He has a thirty percent usage rate. You know who gets thirty percent usage rates? Guys that are like nine k every. Jason slate. Tatum. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean for real. For yeah. real. Yep, for sure. Um, Captain George sixty nine hundred dollars gets Minnesota here. Uh, Io probably takes a hit with Kobe White back. I know we discussed him in the morning show, uh, given his run. Uh, Delano Banton is our highest roster projected player today. So we discussed him on the morning show. 
obviously the ownership probably forces your hand a little bit, right? With $5,600. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, you're living and dying by the fade or not to fade. Right. I mean, he went six for 20 and put up 28 fantasy points. So like it's the 42 minutes and three of the last the five, 42 <laughs> minutes. It's the 42 <laughs> minutes. It is. And, and you know, like Chauncey does that, right? Like he's playing guys. If they're, like he's just letting them play. Like Scoot is if Scoot's still limited, there's no reason to think Banton won't go out there and play another 40 minutes. Um, because Jeremy Grant's doubtful as well. So even if Scoot isn't, he might see Delano Banton still play 40 minutes. Yeah, no, no arguments. Uh so again, Banton getting a lot of love here. Is there any other guards that you're kind of peeping at here tonight? Again, we talked about it um as well. Where's our where's our guy? Craig Porter is getting over 30% rush ship here tonight, and we're not not fully short of the reasoning. I mean, we know it's no Donovan Mitchell, but they have everybody else. So, like, where's his minutes coming in? He played 25 and 22 against Phoenix and Brooklyn. Is that just what it is? That's strong in the appeal here? Um, I'd assume so. I mean, Mitchell was obviously not in either of those games. But, like, he also, the game prior to that, played three minutes. Yeah. And Mitchell wasn't there. And then you see, like, the just the game log in general. Like, it's very hit or miss. And I think, like, if Sam Merrill's going to play 28 minutes, Sean, guess who's going to lose time? Like, there's not as many minutes for Craig Porter. Um, mm-hmm. Because in those games that Porter saw mid, mid-20s, mid Merrill saw low-20s. And then the next two, he's playing 28, and Porter can't even barely – he could barely crack the lineup. And obviously Donovan Mitchell's there, but – um if that's i'm just hoping i'm just hoping for Cade to be out so we can just play marcus sasser and not have to worry about this because Agreed. i don't want to deal with this he's a really good fantasy player for minute guy uh craig porter but like if he plays four minutes four fantasy points yeah great per minute but that doesn't help us yeah I understand. I agree with you 100. percent uh, Getting to the shooting guard position because Andrew well, fast, got P, fast PP. By the way, just fast PP. Oh yeah, we always for whatever reason. I did it this morning. He yelled at me, and then we just I just did it again here. Uh, yeah, Peyton Pritchard is going to play 30 minutes. So yeah, and and there's opportunity for more because yeah. if there's no Jalen, like they can easily just they don't have Hauser to start either, so they could easily just go Derek White off the ball like he's been all year and put Pritchard in the starting lineup, right? Yeah. Do they play three guards the other day? Um, getting to Andrew's question here on T- Talon Horton Tucker and the situation uh, regarding like his role and his minutes 19 minutes, 17 minutes. I mean, this is just this is DMP. He DMP'd last game. Oh, yeah, that, okay, yeah, the last two games and then didn't play. They got healthy, right? They got they got guys back into that lineup, they didn't have a need for him. So, Chris, Chris Dunn, Chris Dunn played and started and yeah. played 24 minutes and then. Horton, uh, Talon Horton Tucker's minutes went bye bye. Yep, they got Taylor Hendricks back. Obviously, uh, a couple of games prior, like there, and he played full minutes in that second game. So like, he just ran out of ran out of space. Right? Dude, Juzang, like, out- dude, Juzang, twenty two and twenty five minutes the last two games. Like, yep. it's and that was what we were worried about when we weren't sure when Talon Horton Tucker was the highest rostered player on the slate. The Atlanta we game. Were- yeah, the Atlanta yeah, the, game. And we were like, I am very skeptical of this situation if he's not starting. Because you don't, he wasn't guaranteed anything more than when he got there. So um, you can just safely put him on the burner. Yeah. No, uh, no, no to Town Horn Tucker. No. And just we'll move back up to the top here. Obviously, Rudy Gobert you know, was returning, but that's not going to impact Anthony Edwards here. Um, you can play Anthony Edwards at 10K if you want. Great spot against Utah. Um, talk Maxi already. Jalen Brown, we'll see. And then as Cam says, James puts on the mask. And he does a little Desmond Bain impression. If you'll tune into this morning show, you heard it. Yeah. Uh, I think the vote got like four votes on Twitter for, for good. Good impression. We're not going to have Bane today. Yeah. We got Batman. I am, I am the Batman. Yeah. Where's Bane? $8,200. Pretty good. It's pretty good. It's, I mean, he, dude, he played 32 off rip. So, I mean, if you want to play him in tournaments, he's – going to do a lot of ball handling. And we don't, we don't know who they're – we have no idea who their starting point guards are. We, we think he may end up being their starting point guard tonight. It's – we – let's let's uh, let's, let's see what the latest injury report is. Let's see if we have Goodwin um, 
We'll get another one at 532. Um, Memphis injury report. Um, um, uh, I don't see... So they don't have Jordan Goodwin listed on the injury report, which yeah. is usually a sign that he's with the team. But we also... Maybe we'll find out ahead of time. Uh, yeah, that game is a 10 p.m. game. <laughs> yeah, I was saying ahead of time. That's why I like didn't... I. What are we supposed to do? Like he's, we're not going to know. He's in, we're not going to know. We're not going to know. Um, other shooting guards in the mid tier range for you. I mean, we talked obviously this morning about Colin Sexton. Uh, still no Clarkson. He played 31 minutes the last couple of games. The shots been fine. The minutes have been okay. The scoring has been good. Uh, but at $7,400, do you find him to be appealing spend up or again, do we target the two guys we discussed earlier, Derek White, and then Karis LeVert's getting a lot of ownership. Yeah, I would prioritize both those over Sexton. And we don't know about, like, the return of Larry Markkinen. If Larry Markkinen returns, like, that obviously hurts Sexton. I know it wasn't earlier in the year, but this is clearly just, like, a different team. And if Sexton's coming off the bench and now there's Markkinen, and it's just a situation I'm just kind of, this the, you know, not the best game environment. Uh, I would just rather play Derek White or Karis LeVert and, and kind of just move on from there. Yeah, oh, for sure. Um, underneath uh, Levert at 68, you know, again, we, a lot of these players you know, I feel indifferent on. Again, some ownership is going to Bleak Monk at $6,400 here. Uh, you have Duncan Robinson at 58. They could be without um, Butler here today, Delano Banton, Nee Smith. Like, what's your, what's your overall thoughts for some value shooting guards today? I'm also just a little, and I'll just jump in and jump out. Yeah. If Cade's out, Jaden Ivey. Could 6,600, we could sure. see um, him do a lot of ball handling. We're assuming Sasser starts, but, like, we don't know that. You know, they could just put Ivy on the ball and rattle some feathers and start John's favorite player, Evan Fournier, so we'll see. Um, Ivy only if there's, obviously, no Cade. Uh, Io, you mentioned shooting or point guard, he's fine. Uh, Monk, tournaments, Ubre. I think you have to, you can only really play him if, um, there's no Toby, which is trending towards being the case. Uh, Duncan broke a slate last time out. He does that every once in a while, um, where he just makes all the shots. And when he makes seven threes in a game, you know, I think there's definitely, I think we could definitely have more interest in Miami than we do right now. If Jimmy's ruled out. Agreed. Uh, because like Rozier is going to be more on the ball. Duncan's obviously been great on the ball. Bam, we're probably going to have more interest. In. So, like, the Miami stuff really hinges on Jimmy, which we'll know pretty early. We we already got the Jovic news. That pretty much solidifies Highsmith in the starting lineup. Yeah. Caleb, Caleb Martin bump. So, um, yeah, like, I would have more interest in the Heat just in general if uh, Jimmy's ruled out. I agree. Uh, small forward position here. Again, a lot of questionables. Well, Sam, well, Sam Merrill, Sam Merrill just to – uh go back just quickly um 4200 like i would rather play him than porter i know there's obviously like a price discrepancy there um where porter's like virtually free and merrill's 42 but yeah, merrill only getting 20 percent too so i mean like there's obviously a, a discount um on him from ownership perspective from craig porter as well yeah i mean i feel i feel better i feel better about the minutes right like at least we yeah. have a little bit of confidence um and then we could talk about. Do you want to talk about your boy Svi now, or we can go to small forward and talk about? Svi. Yeah, I mean, I figured he'd probably fit the small forward profile yeah. a little bit better, but yeah, we'll get to him in a moment as well. Uh, top end small forward, as I mentioned, a lot of questionables here. A lot of guys with dual positional eligibility. Um, Got to think Josh Hart with no OG though. We go back to like the forty five minute OG uh, Josh Hart, right? Yes, yes, for sure. I mean, we're gonna see more precious, and we're gonna see more of just the starting lineup. Like mm -hmm. that's I. I I don't know what else to say. Like you try to you try to talk yourself into like guys getting minutes on the Knicks and they other guys and they just don't. It's just they don't crazy. exist, right? They so just... without OG Ananobi, we're getting 45, 42, you know, 47 type minutes out of Josh Hart. You know, he's already been pretty good. And obviously, the last couple of games, you know, barely paying off prices. But I mean, I know this also has to do with thirty shots a night from uh, Brunson. from Bronson here. But I don't know, man. The uh, the fact that there is no OG just makes me think he's going to get. Another like five minutes plus of playing time here today. Dude, he's live to play 48. Yeah. Without OG. He's live to play 48 minutes. You know, Sacks, like, we get it. You don't have to play Hart, but like in DFS, like minutes, if Josh Hart goes out there and plays 48 minutes, 
You know who has the best opportunity of of the night to score fantasy points? Josh Hart. Because you know why? Because he didn't sit. Like right. that's. I'm not saying he will. I'm just saying he like just flat out had the best opportunity because he was on the floor for every minute of the game. So Agreed. it's. I, I would say like. I don't blame you for not like wanting to spend 7200 for Hart. As we say every time, if Josh Hart hits his shots, he blows yes. up a slate. Yes. With days where he doesn't hit his shots, which he's done a little bit recently, you're getting more 30s and 20 fantasy points. But you can't hate on all the peripheral stats. So, I mean, if he, if today he's going to be able to go out there against the Warriors and go 8 for 13 or something like that, you're going to you're gonna have it. So, um, yeah. And yeah, he played 47 minutes last time against Golden State at 54. Dude, I mean, like, again, like, he went four for 17 in that game. He didn't sit. He sat four. He was like, Tibbs, let me get a sip of water. And Tibbs like, all right, go back in there. Like, that's like, dude, it just is yeah. what it is. Like, some we just, we have to sometimes, and, and you're the, you're very, you, John, are very good at this. Like, covering the, the name for what's, just in front of us, right? It's like, a, he's almost the same price as that day. In the Warriors, if you think about it, the way they play, it matches up a, a little bit size-wise with how the Knicks are going to play this game here. I mean, they'll have Hartenstein at least, so they will they will have a little bit of, of size to them. But you look at Golden State, they play a smaller lineup with Kaminga and with Draymond Green and you know Wiggins and that whole crew. Like That plays to Josh Hart's advantage there, right? Not, not having to go into the trees or, or deal with guys like that on the wing, so... And it's um, our king at the end is. of the day. He is also, yeah, he's our guy. Um, if any of these questionable guys play, like we expect Tatum to play, we're thinking James plays, like, for sure, and I would pay those price tags. Okay. No no problem at all. Um, after that, though, like, where do you where do you go? Like, what's your next what's your next move at small forward? Um, I mean, a couple guys we've talked about, basically. Yep. Um, I don't have, really have much interest outside of that like simone is fine at 57 but we don't even know if simone's gonna play that would be interesting if simone doesn't play what does detroit do it's legit there's a legit chance that we see evan fournier start he played 31 minutes last game john if simone does not play ex boston celtic great yeah. number 88 i think he was in boston he was like some wild number in boston he it might... was too bad. He came over here from the trade and immediately got COVID and was like never able to yeah. come back from it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been a couple of players that have talked about the, yeah. the everlasting effects of COVID. I know Tatum was uh, post his bout with COVID was yeah. talking about it. Um, if Simone sits, like there is obvious appeal with Fournier because it doesn't matter how bad defensively he is. He's going to get out there. He's... Fournier <laughs> only being 31 as well, by the way, like was a stunner to me. I thought like the Fournier, age, like the age. I thought he was thirty six. Well, right? that's because like, well, that's because he was balding at twenty two. Like yeah. He jo- when he came into the league, I remember already, him with Denver when we when I got hired here at Fantasy Alarm. Like yeah. he's been in the league that long, right? But in the NBA, these guys come into the league at nineteen. So remember like, he had the uh, he had the man he had the man bun. Yeah, he had the he always just had a sick fade, and he had the man bun. And now you look at him, you're like, oh, how did you ever have that hair? But he's only thirty one. And he can, and, and as he showed last game, can still be a bucket from three. So like, so we'll yeah. know that news. We shall know that news early. Seven thirty yeah. game. He so. is horrible defensively. Doesn't matter. Doesn't Absolutely matter. Absolutely atrocious, dude. It doesn't matter. Look, if Simone doesn't play there, and let's say Cade sits, Simone sits. Worst case scenario for Detroit, right? Yeah. No Cade, no Grimes, no Thompson, no Fontecchio. He's just going to play. He played 31 minutes last game. Yeah. Something that I you think- alluded to, um, I think it was the Miami game. You're like, what about Fournier, min salary? And I, you know, it would have paid off, but whatever. 31 minutes last game. That's, yeah. that's what we need to know. Uh, Wizards are already back at it for Tuesday, just ruling everybody out. Yeah, um, I mean, NBA, NBA in March. NBA. Uh, George Niang down here at $4,500. He's a play for me. Uh, I know you mentioned just before we went live, Marcus Morris being available for Cleveland. I don't know if that cuts into Niang right away here, but um, you know, it does add a body uh, to that to that team for sure. Um, Harry B, as we talked about in the opening of the show, one of the highest rostered players of the slate, three straight games and 30 fantasy points. Like Harrison Barnes has done this this year, right? He just has these random spouts where you and I are like, nobody's playing this guy. And he goes for 30 and you're like, oh, I guess we probably should have given him a look. And then we do or... 
Actually, I don't think we still have ever clicked on. No, that. no, we never, never, yeah. ever. We never just watch stay. other people multi lineup with Harrison Barnes, and we just like don't touch him there. Yeah. Um, and then we do have my guy down here, uh, Svi Mihailik. He's gonna play twenty you, plus minutes tonight. Do you think if Brown and Tatum are ruled in, how many minutes does he play? If Brown and Tatum are ruled in, I, I that would probably get lessened. I don't think you can play him. Harry Barnes low owned is not the case here tonight, Stacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's disgusting. Harrison Barnes is like the second highest rest in small forward of the day. 5.5 5 behind Karis Levert. Yeah. yeah. And he's, he, a, he's a fifth highest overall rostered player of the day. Yep. Yep. He sure is. Harrison. Unless you play on FanDuel, maybe Barnes. that's different, but on DraftKings at least. Let's see. Uh, everybody. Is, I'm checking right now. Uh, FanDuel Barnes is less rostered on FanDuel. He's nobody's, but I don't even see him. Is he even on the list? Am I missing him? I don't see him. Anyway. I don't even see him. He might not even be in the player pool. They might have him at like six thousand dollars or something. He is getting 0. 0.0. Oh, you know why? Is this a late game? 10 30? 10 o'clock? Ooh, FanDuel, FanDuel doesn't have it on the main slate then. That must be the reason. Yep. 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 They don't. Yep. Yep. Fandle cut it. So <laughs> that's how much that's how much we play on Fandle. It's the DraftKings show, ladies and gentlemen. That's why. <laughs> uh yeah, dude. Um uh, Harry V, people are playing them. No one's yeah. playing Sabonis tonight, but they're just playing Harrison Barnes. Um, anyways, Sfee's also getting some love around 20% here today. Uh obviously, if Tatum or Brown are in, you just probably ignore this play. Because yep. there's a chance he plays 12 minutes instead or, of 43. Or none. <laughs> or none, yeah. I mean, they are down still Hauser and Drew sure. Holiday, but like sure. they don't need to backfill with Sfee for all those minutes if Brown and Tatum are in. They could just go to O'Shea Brissett, who they started yesterday. Right. Um, and I'm not saying Sfee wouldn't play, but I think he'd be more likely to play like 13 or 10 than 20 plus. Sure. If Brown and Tatum are out, I still think they start um Brissett, but yeah. Sfi is going to be uh one of their top guys off the bench so what's your starting in in that scenario yeah. right what is your starting lineup for Boston Tatum Brown ruled out it's white like you know for sure white yeah. Porzingis and I would say Brissett Pritchard. you know Pritchard and then who's your fifth starter Sfi? um Sfi? Brissett. no Brissett's in okay. uh no white this is a scenario Tatum and Brown are out. Okay. White, Porzingis, Pritchard, Brissett. They recalled their first round pick. I, right? I did see, I just saw that. I just read the beat right, sub Boston beat writer uh, tweet that out. Would they, they start? Could, they Cornette? could go double big. They could go Cornette. Cornette Tillman. Yeah. And now, and use. Well, no, Porzingis is starting. No, no, but I mean, like, they could go one of the two as, like, the power. Yeah. Yeah, and they're in this tweet. No, Tillman played. has played more power forward than Cornette is, so I could see Tillman, unless they slide Porzingis to Porzingis the four, to four, which he's played, which he's which he's always, been. Which he's yeah. yeah, yeah. So it will be interesting. We'll see Boston seven thirty. So hopefully we will know um, ahead of time there um, at the power forward position again. A lot of guys we've discussed already. Um, I mean, Porzingis probable. I, does this this not just become a like? Derek White, Chris Asposing is the way you start, or do you think this is just like get Zinger 20 minutes and see where we go? Because he's missed a lot of games here with his hamstring. Five straight, yeah, five straight. And you and I were like, we wrote him off. I and did he, not expect him to play today. He didn't write back. No, yeah. no. Um, shout out Geno Smith. Um I just don't know what the minutes are gonna be because we, we've talked about this a lot, right? In these non like competitive settings, it seems like 32 minutes are the cap, maybe 33, which is fine. But like he played 35 in Denver. Those are the and and then the game prior to that, the last time he played 35 was against Denver. It just seems like they want to get him to the stretch run. So like when you have their like center room is not hurt. Like Horford's sitting on back to back, but they still have Cornette, they still have Tillman, they still have Nemus Quaida. So yeah. you don't need to extend Porzingis. Like, I'm okay getting there if Tatum and Brown are out, but like, 
I don't feel like it would be necessary. Like if he hadn't had this five game absence, then I would say, yeah, let's, let's, let's like lock and load zinger. But I, I don't feel that way about him today. Okay. Uh, Jalen Johnson and Nas Reed next two yeah. guys. You and I have been pretty happy about this year yeah. um, with Gobert potentially returning here today. Does that knock you off Nas Reed at all? Or you're still in there? Yeah, that hurts. Um, well, I mean, over 7K, he's going to come off the bench in that scenario. Granted that Kyle Anderson doesn't play, but I would assume NAW would start and they would just move Jaden McDaniels to the four and still bring Nas Reed off the bench. Um, you know, then we can see, we'll still see a scenario where Nas probably plays 30 minutes if Anderson doesn't play, but I definitely wouldn't call him like a priority if he wasn't starting without Gobert. Yeah. Um, and then, Dude, I love, I mean, Jalen Johnson, every, everyone that's listened to the show you know, knows that we've been like very glowingly uh, glowing about him. And he's been for, back for two games. He's dude, played 35 and 36 minutes in both of those games. And they're they're playing for the play in. Yeah. Like they're trying to get the, the into the play in, and um, he looks completely fine. Like a little ankle sprain, the minutes. I'm not really concerned about a Kongwu's return either, uh, like yeah. for Jalen Johnson at all, because. If anything, Capella. it saves him from having to play the five, right? Correct. Like, and well, and it's just Capella. And and again, the Lakers have been a bottom three defense in the league in terms of defense since Hillside break. So I would happily get to Jalen Johnson if that's right. Yeah, it just keeps them away from Anthony Davis side because Davis expected to potentially yep. return. Right? Well, he so, might not be able to, but also is Davis gonna play with an eye patch or is he Arg? I don't know. Uh, where do you want to go next? What's your next power forward? We look, do we look at the Memphis players? Like, how are we, how are we reacting to Memphis here? <laughs> it's a loaded question. I mean, Jared um, Jackson and, and Bain are the two guys. We know they're active. They know they're going to play. They're going to play minutes. They're going to take shots. But Aldama is coming off of a good game, and Gigi Jackson keeps playing over thirty minutes here. So, and it's coming off a pretty good game, like thirty-three yeah. fantasy points, six K, like would pay it off. I mean, Bain returns. Jaron Jackson healthy. Gigi Jackson still takes 14 shots a game. I think Gigi Jackson has just solidified himself as like offense for this team. Uh, probably third option. Um, I'm fine if that's where you land. Like I wouldn't prioritize either, but as last pieces in, they're both fine. I I, I don't think we need to prioritize either, but if it's a good matchup. Last piece in, no problems getting there. Uh, Jimmy Butler's out. Caleb Martin at fifty eight hundred dollars or no? Uh, I would rather just play like Hawkes at five okay. k. Um, I know Martin's like a couple games removed from just completely breaking the slate, but like that was not. It was a that's like a bet. rotating insert Miami Heat player, right? Like yeah. Duncan Robinson is removed from breaking the slate. Jaime Hawkes just <laughs> yes. Broke the like they they all Nikola Jovic one night broke the slate. Like they all just have a day. I will say like. You, we would have to have interest, I would say, in in Miami if Butler's out because it's Butler, Hero, Jovic, right? Three starters essentially. Yeah. You want to classify? You probably just plug in Rozier, probably at that point, right? You plug in Rozier. You could definitely get Duncan. I think Hakez. We just saw without Jimmy, thirty five minutes yesterday, fourteen shots, and if you can get to Bam, we know what happens when Bam is used as the hub, like. He's not used as the hub as much with Jimmy there, but when he's used as the hub, I mean, he's a monster. So, um, you know, I, I would, I probably don't get to Caleb Martin really in any capacity, unless there was like random Miami heat guys rolled out. Uh, I would probably rank Martin almost last in that scenario, okay. but I would definitely like Duncan for sure in tournaments, Rozier for sure in tournaments. And then down here at power forward, Huck has a five K in terms of usage rate this year. Now, again, obviously some limited sample sizing given the, the minutes, but no Butler, no Richardson, no love, no Jovich, no hero on the floor. Uh, Rosier 26.03 usage rate. Uh, Bam is 26.08. So those are the top two uh, guys in terms of usage rate um, percentages there. Uh, when it comes to uh, fantasy points uh, per minute here, I, I think you'll probably not be surprised to know that Bam Sits at 1.3. Uh, Rozier's at 1.01. Those are the only two guys up over one fantasy point per minute. Uh, but Robinson and Hakez are both 0.9. So um, just two guys that are, are right there. So not too not too surprising. Um, any other power forwards for you? I mean, again, Keegan's here at 55, getting some love. Isaiah Stewart's going to see the minutes. Precious, the, the, the chalk monster at 53. Hendricks coming off some good games at 52. Like, you know, are you just locking in one of these power forwards down here? 
Yes, yeah, so I was looking at the last games without OG, and Precious played all the minutes he can handle. So, like, you have to assume there's going to be some increase in minutes from low 20s to probably mid 30s, uh, because we'll see how they handle it. It might be Bogdanovich that gets the bump. We've seen Bogdanovich in, in spots where we need offense mm-hmm. gets the bump, and then if not, uh, Tobias Harris rolled out. Yep. Uh, on Q. Um, yep. So I, I'm okay getting to Precious. I like Taylor Hendricks at 52. I think Taylor Hendricks is a, a really interesting tournament play if there's no Markkinen. I would need Markkinen out there, I think. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't really want to mess with Hendricks at 52 if Markkinen's in. Uh, Haquez is definitely in play if there's no Butler. Niang you mentioned. Harry B. Uh, I think we had a mention about Batum earlier from Cam. Um, coming off a lot of minutes. Like, you know, I don't know... I, I get it. I also don't know. And he is good. In what are they doing with Kobe here? Obviously, Batum plays in minutes anyways. Ubre starting with heel. Do they go double guards with Lowry and Maxi? Like, what do you? How do you envision this lineup now? With uh... so, I would assume they'd go back to the Batum starting lineup. Uh, Ubre, Batum, Lowry, Bamba, Maxi. That was the five they ran with last time with healed yep. off the bench. That would be my guess. But like. Healed played 20 minutes, right? Those 20 minutes, who's to say that Buddy Healed doesn't upsurp Batum or, you know, Kyle Lowry? Yeah, if he knocks down three threes, open the gate, they're going to give him a leash, right? So, so I think I think Batum is an interesting pivot in specifically to Barnes, right? Like, because Barnes is also pretty similar. Like, if Barnes doesn't make shots, Barnes is not guaranteed minutes with... Right. Malik Monk off the bench, and now they're playing Keon Ellis like 25 plus minutes a night, essentially. I know there's no Trey Lyles. I think that's where the field is like kind of like, all right, we're good on Barnes as like the backup power forward when Murray's off the floor as well. Right. Um, but we've seen times where it's always Kevin Herter and Harrison Barnes, the first two off the like the first two that are just not safe, right? So yeah. Um, I do think there's merit to getting to um, Batum as a as a pivot. We also know he's a low fuller guy at the same token, right? We know he is not going out there. Look, his his 37 minutes had eight rebounds, four assists, two blocks, three steals. That is actually Charlotte Hornet Nick Batum, right? right. Like that is like peak max contract Nick Batum who can do it. Has done it a couple times this year. Um, up in the air if he could do it twice in a row. So I- I'm fine with it as a pivot. Okay. Uh, I'm also fine going to 3,400 percent if guys if he's starting. Um, also another guy with a super low floor. He's also not seller dweller salary like right. basically basically, but still um, one for five. He took a lot of free throws. Didn't make threes like that, but. Like if Tatum and Brown were to be ruled out, I'd obviously feel more comfortable getting. Yeah, I mean, he could t- he could end up maybe getting ten shots, right? Like there's there, there's there's a path for that here. Are you doing the Jalen Smith thing here? Again, getting some roster ship love tonight, dude. You can always play Jalen Smith, right? Because he's just there's he backs up the five. If Turner gets in foul trouble, there's extra run to be had, and he's like in there doing a lot of things. Yep, all at once, like. A lot of shots, very aggressive on the glass, can make threes. I mean, he's shooting 44% from three this year. So you end up on Jalen Smith. That I would say I still lean Barnes and Batum because I think their minute ceilings are just infinitely higher. Sure. Uh, At center, uh, you're either plugging in Precious or Chua. Um, Most of the field is. And then Anthony Davis is actually getting the second highest roster ship percentage, which is scary. Now, again, we expect Anthony Davis to – playing they're optimistic that he suits up for this game there's a very obvious pivot with late swap on what to do here if he does not play right you swap in jackson hayes and you give yourself leverage to move up to uh, lebron james in your lineup that's that's the move but you know how much interest do you have when like sabonis we know is healthy is playing and at 10 percent against a team he's gone for 60 twice (laughs) not even just like like not even just like a modest 60. Like it's right. like a Daniel massive. Brown, by the way, remain questionable. Thanks for the update, everybody. We didn't yeah, Joe. So Joe Missoula um said 
Jason Tatum, no update. Jalen Brown, no update. Chris Stapps Porzingis, no update. Adds that Sam Hauser has no timeline for a return. So All those threes, cool. Manny. He used up his powers, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, I get it. It's a good spot for AD. Um, and he's a, obviously a really good fantasy player. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Not, yeah. not too far removed from 86 fantasy points uh, right. against Minnesota. So, sure. You know, we have seen monster games from Anthony Davis this year. Um, Sabonis, <laughs> dude, we say it like anytime you look at Memphis, they they are forced to run Jaron Jackson at center, and he's not a center. No. Like he is, he is best suited as a power forward. So um, I'm definitely interested in, in AD, but I'm definitely more interested in a low on Sabonis than I am. In- AD. If I'm prioritizing one of the two, um, it would be it would be Sabonis for me. I would agree. Um, after that, again, Vucevic is here at 85. Bam at 87. If there's no Butler, certainly would be something to look at. Did you see the DeAndre Ayton quote today? No, but I can't wait. I'm excited. Is it from Ayton himself? It's from Ayton yeah. himself? He oh, said I'm so, I'm so that his early season struggles, he feels, are attributed to to the fact that he wasn't settled moving to Portland and was sleeping on an air mattress for the first part of the season. Dude. Dude, you're uh, making millions of dollars. Buy yourself a mattress. What so do what do you so, mean air mattress? On. Let's go through the let's go through the timeline for DeAndre Ayton. Yeah. Middle of the winter, he gets stuck in an ice storm. He yes. can't make it to the he can't make it to the arena. Right. Prior to that, he was sleeping on an air mattress uh because he moved to Portland. Was the ice were all the ice storms attributing to him getting to stores to buy an air mattress? You think, or to buy an actual mattress? What do you think? I don't know. And, I mean, and where's where's the Blazers organization being like, <laughs> "Hey, DeAndre, what do you mean you're on an air mattress?" Like, like no. yeah, that uh, he so had anyways, to tell somebody in that like early in the year he was probably telling his teammates like, "I'm sleeping on an air." Yeah, mattress. sleeping on an air mattress, right? And like, it doesn't matter how good of an air expensive of an air mattress you're buying like those he's a big dude that thing is probably depressing like he's losing air as he's sleeping for sure every night right like he, he's a seven foot 240 pound man sleeping on an air mattress every night and what are we doing you know do they make california king air mattresses like i don't know is that <laughs> is this now follow-up question is this you're right is this a is this a deandre ayton problem or is this a portland problem <laughs> I, I don't even know. Is it a, but anyways, at some point he got a mattress, clearly, because yeah. <laughs> he has been destroying. Um yeah. So uh yeah, again, eighty two hundred dollars, perfectly <laughs> fine going there. Jared Allen, you know we love this spot for him at eight K as well. Um, what else are you doing at center here? I'm stuck. I'm stuck on that. Um dude, couldn't believe the quote. I had him at check to make sure it was real. He's like, people don't understand like the transition I was going through. And uh, I was like sleeping on an air mattress for the first half of the season. I was like, what, what do you mean? This, was this from like butt crack sports or is this? No. Like, yeah. No. Giving the quote, giving real the quote. quotes. Slept on an air mattress. Half the season. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely interested in Aiton and tournaments given the upside lately. Um, Jared Allen, almost 1.2 fantasy points per minute fans, everyone that they're missing. So, you know, we, we know he is highly involved in running the offense um, when guys are out. So I'm definitely interested there. Uh, we've set our piece on most of the other names. I mean, Dern is at, at least interesting. Um, I don't know how he's going to guard Porzingis. I'd assume they would, if, if Boston goes double big, I assume it would be Isaiah Stewart guarding Porzingis. Like, I don't think you can have Jalen Dern chase Porzingis to the perimeter. That would be very criminal. So um, if Boston does go double big, I would actually feel better about Duran just not having to guard Porzingis. Um, because if they do double big, I could see Jalen Duran like guarding Porzingis. Maybe he guards Brissett, you know, because sure. Brissett is also probably like he could just stand around. Um, if Akamu doesn't return, I'm okay getting to Capella. We were live watching that game. He ended up having to come back in and he did play six extra minutes, but. Yeah. The minutes have been pretty good, and the dude, thirty-six plus fantasy points in five straight games. Mm-hmm. It's, 
I would have liked it better against Jackson Hayes than Anthony Davis, but either way, it's probably fine. Sure, sure. Um, and then the value, uh, is, it's like Boston if they go double big for me. Um, Are you surprised that Chua is getting as much love over Hartenstein at like a similar price tag? I think the field looks at it as if like, all right, Precious one has multi-position eligibility. So like people are slotting him in there power forward and center so naturally he'll have more position like ownership just being multi-position eligibility but two like we haven't seen 36 39 minute upside from heart and shine like we have for right. precious so um i and i i liked the shout you gave heart and shine 28 minutes last game was great yeah the only problem is every time he's extended the achilles goes again right it's that that's uh, the so, like my only... whole point was like it doesn't take much for tibbs to just ramp somebody up obviously so like all of a sudden he's playing these like low 20s and then 28 out of nowhere right right and now they have to like start a chua again so like the natural backup to heart and signs now in the lineup yeah now it's like do how long do we want to extend jericho sims because like they've been open to giving sims yeah. 20 minutes or so but if oh. you get like 34 minutes on heart today like he definitely has a higher ceiling than a chua i feel like no yeah yeah, as long as Precious isn't being like a psycho on the offensive glass and stuff. Sure. He can be wreak havoc like just solely on the glass, right? Like he is a he's a Tasmanian devil. Yep, I agree with you there. Uh, Dumbling, go ahead. Throw your lineup in the chat. We'll look at your Yahoo lineup for you. I, I honestly, I probably have my own Yahoo. We go with this all the time. I forget about Yahoo DFS. And like I, I'll occasionally remember and I'll go over this guy. Oh, I have like $30 over there. So, um, all right, let's build the lineup then here, sir. What's your uh, what's the first plug of the day? Do, are we trusting the value that's being thrown at us here? I'd be good with playing Delano Ban. Okay. I don't like most of the sub five k value. Truthfully, um, I think things would change for me if like Detroit rolls guys out, which we should probably get soon. Um, uh, you know, um, this is an interesting uh, comment here, John. Um, Svi Mihailuk is warming up with Ross McMains. Uh, he's a Boston assistant, I assume. Could mean nothing, but this is typically when Sam Hauser warms up. So sure. maybe Svi gets to Hauser minutes. That'd be interesting. I mean, again, uh, wouldn't shock me if he if Hauser if if Sv starts. Yeah, you're, he's going to be the highest roster player of the slate. Yeah, you immediately plug him in. So. Um, all right, what do we have for value that we also liked on this slate? Then, uh, what amazing? do you want to do? What do you want to do with spend ups? Like, what's your do we need to spend up today? Do you, I mean, I like Sabonis, man. Like, so uh, do I. I mean, 20 plus rebounds in both games. Against Memphis, so, um, we'll go precious, that's fine. Let's power forward, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, 55 for three positions here. You jam Josh Hart on that. Gives us 47. Need that fire core for the Discord. The Prince, I'll get you a core four. Don't you worry about it. But yes, yesterday's core four was, I think it was a, a work of art. Hauser, Tatum, uh, Wemby, and uh, Cam, yeah. Cam Thomas, Thomas was out there. Your core four was. Doing the damn thing. Uh, you want some Harry B? Do you want George Niang? Like, I mean, just play Harry B and we'll Alan live with Smith? it. What do you think? Uh, play Harry B. We'll, we'll live with it. All right. 53 util. Doesn't um, exist. Um, Hendricks, Hendricks? Yeah. I mean, everything, like, we're building a lineup with, we'd like, we play Haquez so, if we ended up getting no. Uh, yeah. We'd pivot. And honestly, like, Hart probably becomes, like, we'd find a way to make Hart Harry Rozier, right? Where sure. Harry Barnes goes to, like, we'd. Do a lot of swapping, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So we did Hend we do Hendrix there. Is that what we did? Yeah, Hendrix is fine. All right. Hundred dollars left over. Pay it up for the bonus here. Jimmy Butler out on cue. I mean, playing Miami, dude. Fournier. Um, it could be Fournier night. It's it's. So I think Fournier is definitely in play with the the guys out. I definitely think Fournier is a lock if Simone gets ruled out. 
Dude, so Simone gets ruled out. Fournier is a lock. Fournier, 59. Oh, he's going to play. He's gonna does play that get a Duncan Robinson now? It does. Or? He's 58. Yeah. There you go. All right. There you go. You know, we don't have to play Harry Barnes playing Aaron Fournier. Uh, Banton, oh, White, boy. Hart, Achua, Sabonis, Pritchard, Fournier, and Duncan Robinson. Example lineup for everybody. Playbooks out. We'll get to the Discord. If you want the core four that I'll throw in there, go in our Discord, man. Become a member of the All-Pro family. It's in there. Fantasarm.com slash win. It's uh, $39.97 a month uh, each month for all pro access in our Discord. Or, as I mentioned, our annual subscription package. Get it for a year. It's 40% off. Get access to everything we have on site. Anything that's premium from now until next year this time, which means all of baseball is included, all of football is included, the majority of all of NBA and NHL next year, our NASCAR, our PGA, our MMA, you name it, if it's behind the paywall, it is covered with our all-pro package. So you can scan the QR code there or go to fantasyarm.com slash win. Come on, member of the Fantasy Alarm family today. Do not wait. Come join us and win some money. It basically pays for itself. So uh, let's get into tonight's slate, everybody. Good luck with your lines, and we'll catch you all later.